us now, Robert Duvall, whose new movie, Seven Days in Utopia, is now in theaters. Mr. Duvall, welcome. Oh, yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing all right, baby. I uh, I was telling uh, Kevin earlier, this is how I go to movies. I go, people go, you want to go to a movie? I go, is Robert Duvall in it? They go, yes, I go. <laughs> well, all right, David. <laughs> That's okay. If that's what you really mean, that's fine. I really mean it. And I consider you the greatest actor in the world. Well, thank you very much. And I wonder, because I always think if somebody is the best, they know it at some level. And also, I know that you're a man of faith and false modesty is a sin. And I was wondering, (laughs) do you consider yourself the greatest actor in the world? I think I can hold my own with a lot of people. So I, I don't know if there's one person that's the greatest. Some some people say Daniel Day Lewis is the best. He's improved. I didn't used to like him. I like him a lot now. But there, you know, there's 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 a group that are very good. So I don't know if anybody's the best. Well, here's what I here's how I am with acting. I have a lot of problems with acting because I have trouble suspending my disbelief. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of times when I'm watching an actor, I can see him acting. Like I'm going, oh, that guy's acting. Right. Uh, I don't see that with you. Well, you try. You try to keep it invisible. You try to take it back to just the the basic premise of uh, I talk, you listen, you listen, I talk. To keep it that simple between the words action and cut. If you're doing film, you know. So uh, you try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Now, an actor... Well, let's say a guy is always himself, you know what I mean? Like a guy like John Wayne or something like that. He could be very good. Him, I believe, because there's no disconnect between what I see when he's interviewed and what I see. But you, on the other hand, uh, are are different in every role. Well, you still got to bring yourself underneath. There's only one you, right? Right, that's true, yeah. So you you can't really become something that you're not. It, 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 you create create the, the illusion of something else, but it's you underneath. You got one set of emotions, one psyche, one everything. So you have to know how to use yourself to 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 bend it or whatever to make it seem like it's something else. Now I've noticed in your body of work, obviously talking to you, you're an incredibly literate person and a, a very thinking person. And I met you one time. This is I'll tell you this. I met you one time at Saturday Night Live. Garth oh, yeah. Brooks was the host, and you came in. Oh, yeah, right, right. And I was very excited because you were going to do a, I don't know if you remember this, you were going to do a song. Yeah. And and you didn't do it, and I was very sad about that. But I was so, uh, uh, I wanted to meet you so bad, and then I met you, and I talked to you, and I had all these questions for you. And then you started talking to me and asking me questions and you were very looking at me very deeply and asking me, because I come from a, a rural uh, a farm area in Canada, and you were asking me about ranchers and stuff like that. And uh, I was, I don't know if you did that to deflect uh, my questions or if you do that to study people and steal their soul. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. What part, where are you from? Uh, from uh, what part of Canada? So you're doing it right now. I'm from uh, uh, I'm from rural uh, uh, Alberta, where it's. Oh, I love Alberta. That's my, that's my, the only part of Canada I really like. Oh, really? Is I love Alberta. The ranch people up there, the Buse family. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, it's good people up there. Great people, yeah. And that's and that brings me to you. You often uh, portray the common man. Is that something that I, you're not Southern, but you've played a lot of Southern characters? Well, my my dad's from Virginia. And that's the beginning of the South, so. I feel comfortable, you know. I like the Southeast Conference Football League, and uh, mm-hmm. I feel okay in the South, even though, you know, I'm in Texas, too. My Some of my mother's people are from Texas, which is below the Mason-Dixon line, so to speak, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I like to portray the common man, except, uh, you know, when I played, uh, one of my favorite parts was when I played Joseph, Joseph Stalin. He wasn't so com- <laughs> He was common, but not so common, you know. So you you don't mind playing a guy that uh, that you have to figure out the good part of him or something? No, no. He, he, each each part's a challenge. So you know you you uh, you know you go with with what you have to do. You know, research or whatever. You know, and just jump in and do it. You know. Now, yeah. Kevin Farley has a question for you. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been like uh, you know you've done some big movies with big actors? 
was it ever hard? Like, did you get nervous? And how do you deal with your nerves? You know, when you're when you're when you have to really bring your game, your A game, and and that could like say the Godfather with the you know scenes with Brando or yeah. anything like that. Did you were you ever really nervous? Where you had trouble like controlling your nerves? Where you like, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, the last the last job I did it was the most nervous I've ever gotten in my career. I work with Billy Bob Thornton. I call him the hillbilly Orson Welles. The guy's brilliant. And we did an interesting movie. And uh, and the night before, I had to do a scene, and it, it worked. But I was so frightened. I had to do a guy that his his grandson slips LSD in his iced tea. Wow. <laughs> and I had to, like, unbeknownst, I had to. So I did, I think that, that intense fear helped prepare propel me into the scene and make it work in a strange way yeah because it. Uh, it was a very demanding scene but it worked it worked and billy billy doesn't care if you change things change some of these directors you can't change er to out of air yeah but a guy like billy he 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 leaves it open even though the writing is brilliant what he's done he lets you uh, he lets you come up with stuff at the moment which is very uh very uh Admirable, I think. Yeah. Right. It is interesting that you bring up Billy Bob Thornton because I agree with you. I, when I saw um, uh, Sling Blade, yeah. I was like, this guy is exactly what you said. I said, this guy is Orson Welles. How did oh, he do absolutely. this? He's up there with Coppola or Altman or any of them. For yeah. Me. yeah. But then he stopped. Well, he stopped and, and, and he has a country band. He goes around. So I, right. I sent a message to him. Do you sing as good as Lefty Brazil, knowing the answer? You know, I guess, <laughs> I guess he sings. Okay. You know, I don't know, but you know, he's he's got to get back to his A game because uh, the guy uh, the, he wrote, directed, and acted, and he's uh, he, that he's on a high level in in, uh, in all those aspects. Well, can I ask you a question? Because you were in the Sling Blade, you played his dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was I don't this this may be a. I don't know if you want to answer this question or not, but you're an honest guy, right? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you go on Sling Blade. Yeah. You're watching that. Does that character he did in Sling Blade remind you of a character you may have done uh, 30 years ago? Well, yeah, that's what Horton Foot thought, maybe. You know, you're talking about tomorrow? Yes, sir. Well, yeah. that's what Horton Foot thought maybe he was doing me, but I don't think so. I don't know if he ever even saw that. But uh, not not really, maybe a little bit. They could have been cousins, so to speak, you know, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when I did it with Billy Bob, we there was no script. We just He just rolled the camera and we improvised. Is that, that right? It. Wow. So, uh, you know, he, he's great to work with. And oh, uh, yeah. he's got some more things he's going to do, you know. And he's got a, he's, got, he's, he's great. He's you just, have an incredible taste in the choices you make, right? You you yeah. must put thought into this. Do what now? Are you you're a, are you a literary uh, person? Well, somewhat. You know, I I read. You know what I want to read. You know, I you know I I mean, I'm reading a lot of stuff on the on on the Comanche Indians now because the friend of mine may direct Empire of the Summer Moon, that terrific script. On oh yeah, yeah. I'm you know I, I guess you know I, I I may be wrong, but everybody Horton Foot once said people don't know what goes on beyond the South Jersey Shore from New York. Necessarily, right. and uh, I think that uh, I don't know what I saw of the Searchers. There's, it may be a great movie by John Ford, but the, what I saw, I got to watch the whole thing. I found some of it corny, yeah, melodramatic. You found some, some of the Searchers corny? Yes, absolutely. Which parts? Yeah. Absolutely. Please come home. Please come back. You know, you know. And this 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 book deals with the real thing of of that woman that was ca- captured by a, a, a you know by the by the Comanches. Sure. And, uh, but it, I mean, if you if you criticize a friend of mine once said, if you criticize John Ford, and you know, like I got this great icon from Hollywood, it's like attacking motherhood. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. But uh, but there's some some of those old guys. Like when I did True Grit, that was one of the worst directors I ever worked with in my life, Henry Hathaway. Yeah, one, really? one of the worst. Some of those old guys were like tyrants, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opposite of Billy Bob. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, I remember you saying one time that that I found interesting that you either like the new kind of acting or the old kind of acting, and you don't like the old kind of acting. Well, some no. A guy like a guy like Spencer Tracy, for the most part, was terrific. Of course, when he did Old Man in the Sea, the Communist Daily newspaper in Havana, Cuba, blasted him, saying mm-hmm. that you know here's a. Here's a Anglo-Saxon trying to play a Cuban, but, but you know, <laughs> actually, you know, when he was right, like Bad Dad, Black Rock, he was wonderful. But I think that the the young actors today are better than ever. You do? 
Yeah. Absolutely. You go in each country. Look at the look at the look at the African Americans, the black actors we have now. They never could act before. Before it was like uh, Uncle Tom time. Yeah. They're wonderful black actors, Spanish actors, guys mm-hmm. in Argentina. I know wonderful actors, Spain, England. Mm-hmm. You know, it's open to all now. It's, it's an in medium that's open to all. So mm-hmm. I think you know. I mean, there's good and bad still, but there's. I think overall, the young actors, the bar's been raised. Maybe w- those who went before, we helped them find that uh, yeah. that aspect of it all. But uh, no, I, I really think the, that it's open for all, and there's still bad work, obviously, and bad movies. But uh, the, the, some of the young actors are wonderful. Well, tell us about yeah. this young actor that you're working with in uh, Seven Days. In, he's, in, he's, in how, he's as good as they get. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, he's, he's terrific, uh, Lucas Black. He's a he's a scratch golfer. Wow. It's the only movie ever that where. Uh, you know where the, the the lead actor can hit the ball, really. Yeah, and he's a, and he's <laughs> no, that's true. Guy. In between takes, he, he said, "I will." He said, "I will challenge the world champion turkey caller and beat him." He does these phenomenal <laughs> animal calls because he grew up with nature, fishing, in in the backwoods of Alabama. You know, oh, but yeah. he's, a, he's a terrific kid. And uh, we when we did uh, the movie, it was uh, it was wonderful to go work in Texas with the with uh, just. Great people down in that hill country, and uh, the, the Lou Waters and his family, and uh, Ken Herford uh, and, the, and the, the golf pro Stan. All these wonderful people welcomed us, and it was it was great working with with. That's the reason, I, one of the reasons I took it to work with Lucas. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to love it because I love God. I don't I don't think you love golf, but I love golf. Well, I like it okay. It just takes too much time. Yeah, it's a yeah, lot of time. <laughs> but my, good in this group, Jimmy Con, my good friend Jimmy Conn's always out playing, but I'm I'm afraid to ask, ask him his handicap because I know he'll, like, exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of golfers lie. Yeah. I, I read a thing once in Golf Digest. They went out because it's very, um, uh, you know, a lot of integrity of real golfers, you know. And it was, yeah, well, I, I've heard of guys picking up the ball when you're not looking and throwing it another 100 feet. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 you know, on the, on the score card, I guess it's easier to cheat consciously and unconsciously, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, my second favorite golfer beside, behind Tiger is in your movie, K.J. Choi. Oh, he's terrific, yeah. Was, yeah. He a I, cool, was he a cool guy? Yeah, I didn't get to know him, but they say he is. Yeah, he's, you know, he played a villain, but uh, he's supposed to be a really a terrific and really a nice guy, you know, so... So uh, yeah, it was it was interesting working with those guys. You know, it was I love working in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, man, we should talk about Lonesome Dove because that's the uh, my favorite part. Uh, that, that's yeah. your favorite part ever. Yeah, ever. Real, yeah. not Tender Mercies. No, ever. No, I should let the uh, English play Hamlet and King Lear. I'll play Augustus McRae. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I just thought of this, but you in many like we were talking about tomorrow. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Boo Radley, obviously, you played. Horton, Horton Foot, the great writer. Yeah, my friend. It was wonderful, man. And ma- so many of these parts that you played uh, uh, were very, uh, is the word taciturn? People that don't speak very, is that oh, a word? Yes. I don't, I don't know if that's a word. But you, uh, you don't speak a lot. And in Tomorrow, you virtually don't speak at all. Well, I, when I did, I, I saw a guy in southern Missouri who wants to talk like a cow. So that's the way I kind of did it. We did it as a, a stage play first for 25 performances at Herbert Burghoff's studio in New York City, and then we did the movie afterwards, you know. Yeah. So it was like a oh. complete experience. But it just occurred mm-hmm. to me, since you, since, you play these, since you played these characters before Lonesome Dove that were, were very um, non-verbose, that maybe Call would be the guy that you would play. Well, that's what McMurtry still says that... I should have played Call. He's, he, he's, he wrote it. He's, he's absolutely out to lunch on that. Ab- yeah. You mean That's after God, the my, movie? My, my, my ex-wife said to me, I read a novel I like better than Dostoevsky. Don't let them talk to you into playing Call. You've got to play this other guy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah so, so I, I really... So even after, the, even after the miniseries, McMurtry thought you were miscast. Yeah, well, that you know, shows you where his head is. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we come back? Can you say for another thing? Because I wanted to talk about faith with you. Yeah, okay, yeah. We'll talk about little faith. Come on, let's do that. <laughs> That'd be okay. cool, baby. All right. All right, we'll be back with the greatest actor in the world by my uh, standard and by his own, self-admitted. <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to talk about country music because I love country music and I know Robert Duvall Oh yeah, I like music. it. I love it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a common friend, Billy Joe Shaver, who I love. Oh, Billy Joe. You know, my wife made a wonderful documentary on him. I saw it. It oh, was yeah. awesome. Oh, he, he was so 
natural in front of the camera. When I put him in the, uh, the apostle way back the second day, he said he came out and said, hell, I got this deal licked, he said. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, if there's a guy whose life story should be made into a movie, isn't it that guy? I think so. Chris Trofferson once said if life was a television show, Billy Joe Shavers come on. I'll come on every morning at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you this, Mr. Duvall, because um, yeah. uh, I want to, uh, since we were talking about country music and Billy Joe Shaver and stuff, uh, when I talk to Billy Joe Shaver, this is what um, I love about country music, and I talk to him about writing a lot. Right. And uh, he says that um, the hardest thing about it is taking very big ideas and putting them in very small uh, uh, writing, you know, very pithy writing, you know, right. not to be over. And and I, it strikes me that your acting is like that, like a, a, lot, a lot of the things that you do, like in Tender Mercies, uh, Tender Mercies, which I loved, uh, you don't speak a lot. Right, right. Yeah. So now what's the question? The question is... Uh, is that why you love country music? No, I just like country music because I've always listened to them. My brothers sang opera and sang, uh, they were classically trained, and I always just loved uh, country music. That was, that's what, you know, I, I, I loved it. Now, and, I suppose uh, you'd say that's corny, too. You seem to say everything's corny. Well, no, no, there's there's a legitimate sense of melodrama. I mean, you, you find that in Shakespeare, for, you know, I mean, melodrama can be very valid, you know, the things that seem melodramatic, you know. Right, right, because, like, a lot, like, I'm always defending country music, because people say to me, like, oh, country music, it's just about, you You know, your dog dying, you're losing your truck, and you... Right, right, play it all backwards. Yeah, yeah but, but I go, that's life, that's what life is. Yeah, but the, the point is, you go, I, I took my wife to her first opera here in Washington, D.C., where they played subtitles, they put the subtitles up there, what they were singing in Italian, it was far cornier and simplistic than any country song I ever I ever heard. <laughs> so your so your uh, uh, country musicians you like Lefty Frizzell, you said. Yeah, well, I love Merle Haggard, but there's so many I like. Yeah. I like Bobby Bear. I like I like, I loved Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash. They oh, yeah. died too young, these guys. Yeah. Well, Waylon oh. Jennings, yeah, he was the greatest. Oh, uh, and, it's and interesting Tammy you mentioned. Tammy Wynette was wonderful. She oh, oh she was a wonderful lady. She, yeah, you oh, like yeah. lady singers? Talking about it. Yeah. What about? It's interesting you bring up Merle Haggard because I might be way off base, but when I saw Tender Mercies, I'm like, oh, he's doing Merle. Well, that's what somebody thought. That's what uh, uh, Willie Nelson asked me if I was aping Merle Haggard. I said, "Well, I love him. I don't know if I was aping him or not, but maybe, you know." I, you know, I, you know. It, uh, so, and then George Jones said it was his life story, which it wasn't. You know, <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, uh, well, that's but you know, speaking speaking of faith based, uh, real quick, Billy Joe Shavers. You know, he uh, he lost his his son, his his mother, and his wife, who he married three times. He lost them. They died all in. In one year, it was incredible. Said, it was like a like 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 Job. Yeah, I said, Billy Joe, how'd you get through this? He pointed to his chest and said, "Jesus Christ." Now you can't yeah. say that in New York City. Up yeah. north, you don't do that. But down there in the south, of those guys, that you know, they they they're pretty inundated in the, in the in the philosophy and belief, uh, beliefs of Jesus Christ. You know, so that's what he he said to me at one point, Billy yeah. Joe. Yeah, they're not uh, they're not afraid to, uh, to say it. And and you're right. If people if you say it in like I live in Los Angeles, if you yeah. say such a thing, people will look at you like you're saying you have Down syndrome or something. Yeah. Well, who's the writer from Alabama? Also, he wrote a book. It's all over. But the shouting. I forget his name. He wrote for the New York uh, one of the New York papers. I forget the guy's name right now. He brought that up out in the South. You do that, but then once you get above the Mason Dixon line, sometimes it's difficult to bring up Jesus or anybody like that because it, they look at you like you're a square or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, they look at you like it's they reduced him to a silly character. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I'm sure that was uh, that must have been your um, your motive in uh, writing and directing and starring in the Apostle. Do I? Yeah, it took me many years to get it off the ground. I did. I had to use my own money and everything. Had I done it in Hollywood, they would have never, never done it correctly. They would have play, paid me big time patronize the subject, patronize certain regions in, Amer in America. When I did it, I put up my own money. I got I got my money back plus changed, and that was it. But I, I got great satisfaction in doing it. Yeah, yeah. Because because I got bo from both ends. I heard that Bill, uh, I heard that uh, you know that uh, uh, the great preacher you know from uh, 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 Billy Graham liked it, 
And then I got a wonderful letter from Marlon Brando saying he liked it. So I got it from <laughs> the secular great. and the religious. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great. That's both fantastic. Ends. You got it from both because sides. Because you, uh, what was the name of the character? Uh, 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 Sonny. Sonny. Uh, 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 Sonny, too. I, I wanted to use my mother's maiden name, but th that was the name of some preacher, so I didn't want to get a lawsuit. So, <laughs> his, Sonny Dewey, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. But that movie yeah. really struck me because I I grew up in a rural uh, uh, Canada in a very very small town, and the preachers would come, and we would go and listen to them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're some of those preachers up there in Canada. I actually went to some, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're a little, they're a little different from the guys in the, I'm on the devil's hit list. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never had the Southern Baptists, but we would have the the famous people from the United States come. And you yeah. could tell, I, I could at a young age, who were the real guy? Now, uh, I, didn't, I don't know. I can't look into a man's heart. But some of them seemed fake. Like, for instance, I saw Jim Baker. He seemed like a like a complete fake. Well, he could be. Yeah, a lot of those guys, yeah. yeah. But Absolutely. I tell you, I, I saw Jimmy Swaggart, and I thought that's a real guy. And even when he did his uh, his apology on TV, that well, seemed authentic to me. Yeah, but he, he does like to, he, he's minimized his crocodile tears since then. <laughs> you know, he, he's very talented. You think he's, those were crocodile tears? Yeah, yeah. Billy, uh, his, uh, his uh, cousin, who was he, who's his cousin? He's, Jerry uh, Lee Lewis? Yeah, he said we walk, we work different sides of the street. That's what <laughs> <laughs> really? So but you think? But you know, the country singer, what's his name? The guy from Nova Scotia, uh, uh, Hank Snow. Hank Snow. Uh, well, well, his his son was a Pentecostal preacher. He was one of the first guys I saw doing my research. Uh, Jimmy Snow. He's a has a church down there. But what happened was, uh, Lefty Frizzell's, uh Wife went to his church, so he's, he knew Je Lefty was a rounder and he was a drank and this and that. He says, God told me to tell you to, to leave Lefty. And Lefty called him up and said, well, God told me to tell you I'm going to come over there and whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you were ra what were you raised? What were you raised? <laughs> anyway. What were you raised, Robert? Oh, I was just a Protestant family. Uh, oh, okay. Family. Yeah, yeah. My dad was, was different. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, you're you're a Catholic. Irish Catholic. Yeah. 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 So right. I was raised Protestant. That's a little more. Catholics a little more ritual. A lot of ritual. Protestants a little more. I don't know if it's a little more visceral, direct. Maybe. Yeah. Don't get my wife started. She comes out of a <laughs> Catholic family in uh, Argentina <laughs> with a with a Jesuit rule, but yeah, you know, yeah, we I won't get ready. into that. We no. won't get into that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where did you get married? Pardon? How old were you when you married your latest wife? Oh, I was old. My, my, when I met my father-in-law, I said, I don't, I don't want to call you a father or son, he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing? And, and, and then I told Wilford Brimley. You know, Wilford, he's, he's a character, that guy. He's a, he was a Jack Mormon. He was a bodyguard for Howard Hughes. He sings jazz with a band. He's a very interesting guy, wow. yeah. Wilford Brimley. When I came up, I said, you know, Wilford, I got this young woman that's much younger than me. Everybody thinks she's too young, this and that. He said, let me tell you something, my friend. The worst thing in the world for an old man there's an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh. Now you you do have people. You have a much wider, uh, inter, you know, interest than most actors, right? Most actors, I think, hang out with other actors or whatever, or go to parties or whatever. That's okay. That's okay. I I, I like a good Hollywood party when I'm out there. We live in Virginia, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My but wife's you, from Argentina, but she said Virginia for her is the last station before heaven. Ah, oh, that's nice. She loves it here, and uh, you know we like the. I love Texas, but we like living in Virginia at the moment. You know. Yeah. And how do you keep up with a young lady like that? Oh well, <laughs> no, she, she, she keeps me going. She looks after me well. Here's Checked what I was. Me. Here's what Works I was telling me. Kevin uh, during the break. I was saying, you're 80 years old, right, sir? Yeah, I'm 80 years old. Right. Now I see you when you're interviewed. You're a you don't look. You don't look eighty at all. You're powerful and you talk. But then you can do parts. Like I saw. Uh, I remember in Convicts. That's where I thought you looked the oldest. Yeah. You looked like a real eighty-year-old guy. Well, that's a, that was another Horton Foot script, and 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 the director of Tender Mercies, who did not direct that, liked that movie so much he gave it as Christmas presents to his friends. That was a nice film that a lot of people didn't see. Oh, that was but, a beautiful But you know, I, movie. I had a wonderful career of four, four or five. Movies with Horton Foot, and then I had the, the also with Coppola, and had had I never done anything but those two guys' works, it would have been a wonderful mini career for me. There were yeah. two, two yeah. wonderful 
talented people that uh, you know gave me gave me great parts and everything. But it was great working with Horton. You know how many people you have. A friend for 50 years, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, nice. That's yeah. and, then, and then the movie of Get Low that I did, it was so, uh, I love that movie. My wife loved it so much. I wanted Horton to see that before he died because it reminded me of, of his work, but then he died before it came out. Oh, and when wow. I was doing the final speech for the audience, my wife was off camera and she got a, she got a, a, a telephone message that Horton had just died. Oh, wow. And I was doing that speech about death. Yeah. Wow. So ironic. It was like, Full circle from from tender Mer- from to kill a mockingbird, you know. That, yeah, uh, and that's also interesting that wow. you were doing the speech and get low, and in in tomorrow uh, you uh, in the last scene were in a, a coffin. Yeah, was well, yeah. Also yeah. in the coffin in the in, the, in the, yeah. Well, you mean in the convicts? I was in the coffin. In convicts, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So but, con- who was who did convicts? Uh, who directed that? Yeah. Uh, Pete Masters, and that was. Uh, the Horton's first cousin, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right, that, yeah. that was an amazing movie, and that was a, a, a character that was, uh, I guess he had dementia. Yeah, yeah. I played him like one of my uncles moved to Texas from Virginia. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and I sat on a grave and, whose grave am I sitting on here? <laughs> and, and I made that up. Horton, Horton would sit under the cameras. He'd write. i say, Horton, could I try a little, change a little? i go, ahead, Bobby, that's okay. Then he'd watch it. they say, cut. He'd go back to writing something else. But he didn't mind if he changed a little something, you know, not yeah, yeah. so much the text, but he was great to work with Horton. He was a, really an actor's friend and ally. Some of these yeah. d- directors you work with are, are, are an actor's enemy. Yeah. 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 Well, Tender Mercies was the best movie ever, but I remember a line in Tomorrow that was so cool. I just uh, remember it now. I'm, I'm going to screw it up, but it was when uh, they come and take the boy from you. Yes. And you say... Do you remember the line? You, no, s- uh, uh, you say you refresh my memory. It's been a long time. You say uh, uh, I expected it. Uh, yeah. I reckon that's why it took me by surprise. Yeah, I think that was scripted, though. Yeah, with Horton, wonderful line. Yeah, yeah that was you know, I wouldn't line. see that movie for a year. I was so ticked off at the producers and everybody. They cut a scene where I ride on my mule thirty miles to see that son when he's grown up. He, I say his name, he doesn't recognize me. I take off my hat wow. to, to see if he'll recognize me. Then he doesn't. And I get in my mule and ride and go back home 30 miles. Wow. And I had a great, great, great moment. One of those moments I got so emotional, I couldn't even speak. Yeah. And they cut the scene. Oh. oh, that is interesting because in that movie it is a little choppy at both ends. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I won't go into the reasons why that could be, but uh, <laughs> but, but yeah. overall it was it was a good experience. And it's always great yeah. was great working with Horton. You know. Do you yeah. have other scenes that that have been cut that you wish were not? Yeah, probably. I, I can't think of any right now. Let's hope Billy Bob doesn't cut any of mine from this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm but glad this, to hear that Billy a, Bob is, this is directing. This is the most unique script I've probably ever read, the one. Jane Mansfield's Car is the name of it. Billy oh, Bob. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, the people, he, he, sent, he sent the script to the same people that financially backed Seven Days in Utopia. He never heard from them because a lot of the preachers will not come see, see this movie. Of course, if they come, they might like it underneath. See, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it is so secular but so accurate. Yeah, you can't, you can't. Like a guy called in a faith-based station called in when we're doing publicity, and he brought up the fact that in the Old Testament, there's a lot of R rating. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yes. And so, yeah. uh, you know, it's uh, the secular in the as long as it's done accurately and 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 beautifully. It can be a little, uh, uh, you know, a little uh, shocking to some people, but as long as it's done well, as Billy Bob has done, I think, in this movie, then then it becomes a valid statement of filmmaking. Right. Right, right, right. right. When you do a movie, since uh, uh, Gus McRae was such an incredibly fully realized character and uh, so great, then when you do Broken Trail or Open Range or anything like that, are you? Uh, do you have to try not to go into that, or is it a? You know what I'm saying? Uh, what do you mean go into it? What, well, what? is it a tough thing to try to match that because they're they're similar characters? Well, it's similar to a point, to a point. Yeah, they are. I I actually feel that uh, if if you looked at Broken Trail in its entirety, I think it was better made than Lonesome Dove. Really? Oh. I, I mean, Lonesome Dove's my bad, but it's right up there, you know, and it's it. it, it and somebody said, you know, this and that. It's not a faith-based movie, but it's a wonderful movie in that these guys saved five Chinese girls from servitude and prostitution, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the original no. script. And uh, 
and it was uh, it was really nice to make. But you know, like with, with Lonesome Dove, you get seven hours to develop a character, and yeah. a lot a lot of actors won't do do TV because you you do TV in your career and you try to get out of it to get into features. But then once you get a certain leverage, you'll go back to do something like Lonesome Dove or Stalin, you know, uh, yeah. uh, in television. And uh, television can be great. Yeah, yeah. still action and cut. I mean, you, you're playing characters, so uh, mm -hmm. but you do have sometimes more time to develop a character. And you know, westerns are my favorite movies. They always they always go like westerns are dead, and then a western. No, goes they're back not and dead. People great. say that, but people always look for them, and they're yeah. always doing them. There, there's a mm -hmm. flux of a, a bunch coming back for TV now and everything. There was a there was a great uh, western a couple years ago, about, uh, big with a big long title. Remember that movie, Kevin? Uh, the, the coward. Uh, the, oh, the coward. Jesse James, uh, Jesse James and the coward. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was interesting. Did you ever see that? Yeah, I thought it was well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought that was amazing, and they had no yeah, music. The, the, the guy did good playing Bob Ford, but Lucas Black would have been terrific too, boy. He would have been great playing that part. Yeah. No, I I, I like uh, some of what uh, Brad Pitt does. Did you ever see him do the movie Snatch? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. A good he was fantastic. Awesome. That he was, was fantastic awesome. playing that gypsy. Because I, I know a little, but I, I directed a movie once called Angelo, My Love, where I only used one professional actor, and all the rest of the actors were American gypsies, and they were terrific natural actors. But, you know, Brad Pitt, I think, went up to Northern uh, uh, Ireland and, and picked up that lingo. It was terrific. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Duval, for Thank all your time. You're awesome. Thank you, Mr. Duval. And, uh, and uh, say hello to Dennis Miller and tell him uh, next time I expect to talk to him. What the? <laughs> Dennis Miller Show. <laughs>